we welcome you once again to Strength for Today. And we thank God for another opportunity that he has given us that we can come together in unity. And thank God for the precious written word of God. Our subject today is overcoming temptation. Now, somebody may say, well, now, how encouraging is that? Well, I believe it's a word from the Lord. I believe that it's strength for you and I, and it can help us to understand various things in life. Okay, our verse of scripture is taken from 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. It says, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. So God is faithful. And there's no temptation that is taken us that is not, it's just a common to man. Now, notice what the scripture does not say. It says God will not. Many people say God will not put on you more than you can bear, but it doesn't say that. It just speaks of that there's no temptation that is taken you, but it's common to man. But with every temptation, God will make a way to escape. Now, I do not believe that that way is made at the moment or at that time of temptation. I believe that way is already made. Amen. But you see, it's up to you and I to accept that way that has been provided. And the Bible tells us about, the Bible tells us what we are to do about temptation. I don't care who you are. Everyone is tempted in ways in their life. And it's no sin to be tempted. We will look a little closer at that. But the Bible says this is one, one, some of the things that we can do to resist temptation. It says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Or draw closer to God, and he will draw closer to you. This is in James 4, verse 7 and 8. So good submit. Submit yourself to God. First, you submit yourself to God. See, there's many ways we can submit to God. Now, but the number one way that we submit to God is submit to his word. See, when we submit to God's word, we're submitting to him. Because if you submit to God's word, you're doing what he says to do. Amen. And so it says, draw closer to God, and he'll draw closer to you. And that is a promise of God. And and Ephesians 4, 26 and 27, it says, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. So it's no sin to be angry, but you can be angry in sin. And so but it, the scripture is saying, be angry and sin not. And it says, neither give place to the devil. See, in our anger, we can give the devil place in our lives. It's sure, it's, it's temptation to be angry. It's temptation to fall into your emotions and allow your emotions to rule you and to just get angry with people. I'm glad we don't have anyone on the line like that. Glory to God. So, so we uh, neither give place. Because in this, you can give place to the devil. And in Matthew 26 and 41, it says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So it says, watch and pray that ye enter not. It infers if you're watching and you're praying, you won't enter into temptation. See, now, it's no sin to be tempted. But it's the problem is when we enter in, it says, and then it says the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So don't put no confidence in the flesh. Now, what do you mean put confidence in the flesh? You just say, well, I can go here or I can do that and it won't affect me. Well, you, a lot of times you're just trusting in your flesh. No, we are to turn away. So we give the devil no place. We give him no place. And it says watch and pray. What does it mean by watch watching? Well, I I believe that goes pretty deep. But one, one of the things is that we watch ourselves. 
Amen. We watch ourselves. We we watch where we are. We watch what we do. And also, we watch the word of God. We keep an eye on God's word and to pray. Jesus said, man, are to pray always. So it's a having a prayer in our hearts. Glory to God. In 2 Timothy 2 and 22, it says, flee also useful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that that call on the name, a call on the Lord out of pure heart. So it says, flee youthful lust. Let me tell you something. You don't have to be youthful, a uh, young person, in order to have lust. Amen. It says, flee youthful lust. So there are things that may be confronted with a lustful things, and we're to flee. And flee means to run. It means to turn away from. It means basically that we are to do something about it. And over in James uh, one thirteen in verse 14, it says, uh, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Now, now, what is it saying there? It, it just says, see, people say, well, the Lord tempt me, or the Lord have me going through this to teach me something. Well, now, don't misunderstand me. There's many things that we go through because we are living for the Lord. It's many things that you go through, and sometimes you you can be tempted because you are living for the Lord. The Bible says they that live godly shall suffer persecution. So there's many things that you'll go through because you are living for God. But the Bible plainly tells us right here, God is not the one that's tempting you. God is not the one that's putting temptation upon you. No, it's not God. It's not God. But a lot of times when we are tempted, we are drawn away of our own lust and enticed. Amen. Now, I know what people are thinking. They're saying, well, Jesus was tempted. Yes, Jesus was tempted. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. The Bible said to be tempted of the devil. But see what we have to realize, that there is only one Jesus. And Jesus was the son of God. Jesus had a purpose. Jesus, God had a plan for his life. And I'm just telling you right now, we are all, we are not in the same class as Jesus was when he came as the son of God to die and to pay for the sins of my, mankind. Did you notice the Bible said Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil? Did you also notice that he said, he said that the first temptation that came to him, the devil said, if I be the son of God, command this stone that it be turned into bread. And Jesus told him, said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Did you also notice that in, in Genesis, the book of Genesis, the first temptation that Adam and Eve was confronted with was to uh, eat. It was food. They ate of the fruit the forbidden fruit, and, and that they, they fail in that. Amen. It was food. And so the first temptation that Jesus was confronted with was food. Amen. And so it's very, it's very interesting. And, and uh, but again, the emphasis is this, is that God is not tempting you. God is not tempting us. And so it is for you and I to do something about what we are confronted with. And, and we shared verses of Scripture. The Bible said, uh, flee useful lusts. The Bible said, give the devil no place. The Bible says for us to submit to God and resist the devil. That is the truth. That is a fact concerning your life and my life. Praise God.